let's. Uh, what was that phrase you just said about the 413? Well, I said this car has a lot of horses, and when you feed them oats, they like to run. Let's let's see this one run a bit. Go ahead. Okay, I was surprised. Suddenly we're going 80. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised and impressed. Oh yeah, and I hit the brakes. There we go. Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today we're out in Minneapolis, out in the suburbs. And today I've got two people you're going to want to know. I've got Mike, our restorer. Mike, your last name? Sweet all. Sweet all. I'll put in the description of this video in case you want your car to look like, well, this one. And I've got Randy Geyer. Our friend who's got another fantastic car. Randy, what year make and model is this one? This one's a 1960 Chrysler 300F convertible. And you've got a nickname for it. I call it the Cherry Bomb. The Cherry Bomb. So let's take a look at the Cherry Bomb. And Mike, let's talk about the restoration on this car. How long did it take you to restore the Cherry Bomb? Most uh, most of these big fin cars take me about two years to do, so wow. just because of the uh, availability of parts and um, getting things in time. So um, a lot of big shops can't even do it in two years. So so that is quite the accomplishment. Now, do you work on just this car for two years, or no? We have several cars in process. So wow. So you're just kind of surrounding them. You're kind of surrounding the car with parts, and then when the parts come in, you start to work on it, and it's just a work in progress is what you're sharing. Yes, yep. Yeah, the whole car's been completely off the frame and put on rotisserie, and the bottom of the car is just as pretty as the top. So That is wonderful. Well, while I'm right here, I'm going to show you what it looks like with the top up. So I wanted to show you what this one looks like with the top up. Now, back in the day, there were only two colors for these tops, white and black. So we know that it has a different color top than that. But as you can see, this top matches the interior and boy, does it look good. So I wanted to show you what the car looks like with the top up. And now let's show you what the top looks like coming down. Juan, I appreciate your help. just like that and we're back so as we get closer to this car a couple of neat pieces what was the most difficult part in doing a Chrysler 300 F I can't recall at this time but the uh, the 300 club was actually very helpful with coming up for parts for the 300 F and uh, Randy as, as well um, as far as finding stuff this car was very actually very complete uh, rust free California car so it was not as difficult a project as um, I usually undertake, you know, so I don't, there's no rust on this car whatsoever. Wow. It came out of a uh, movie world in California um, way back in, you remember? Yeah. Uh, my brain is stuck, but yeah, yeah this, this car was originally sold new to some Hollywood producers that bought it to use it in films. It never did get in any films, and so it sat in a warehouse in Santa Ana, California for years and years and years and years, until a friend uh, bought it in 88, I believe it was. And then he put it in his garage, and it sat for another 40 years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it was one of his favorite gems. Yeah. Well, let me just share the back end of that. The Hot Riders dream those taillights. Love the taillights on the back of the 60s. Yeah. Sure enough, it's got the best looking. Okay. And let's take a look at our trunk and treats. 
So here we have our trunk. And as you can see, we have the manual for the Chrysler 300F, as well as the 60 Chrysler Operating and Maintenance Guide. This great tire. There's your, you have to zoom in because it's such a big, you can actually hear maybe a little echo from me here on this and the light. Randy, tell me about this block. Well, this is a, a thing that was included from Chrysler from the factory, a wheel chalk. And the reason that they put that in there is that all of these Chrysler cars from, oh, uh, 56 to, I don't even know, 60, mid-60s, all came with push-button transmissions. Everybody's seen the push-button transmission. Sure. Well, there is no park selection in, in the push-buttons. So when you park your car, you put it in neutral, and then you set the parking brake. Got it. They also included this chalk, so if you're on a hill and maybe you don't trust the parking brake or whatever, you, for ultimate safely, you chalk the tire with this there. block. Came from the factory. Very yeah. cool with the Chrysler 300 <laughs> shirt. So let me just show you a little bit of this. And again, there's your certified maintenance. They show you some pictures. You've got some diagrams. The seven-way heater. There's your turn signal on your, they call it the Astrodome, the Astrodome, yeah. electroluminescent instruction panel for lighting. We'll turn the lights off in here too and show you what that looks like at some point so you can see that. But there's your Chrysler 300F. And you can read that there. I'll pause that there. Great shot. Bold confession. There's your cross ram engine. The big brawn of the 413. It's another great shot of the car. The sound of authority. convertible we have here to whom it most concerns there's your dimensions and we'll go back to the car and we're back so let's take a look at the interior. Randy, may I? May I open it, Randy? Yeah. Go Thank ahead. you. So, Randy, right off the bat, I want to just show some features of things, but you've got an interesting comment. Let me just show this instrumentation. And I want to just share these seats because they're almost basically individual, but not only do they swivel, as you can see, go ahead and put that back, Mike. But Randy, talk to me about the six-way. Well, these, these seats are six-way power seats. And the interesting thing about it is only the driver has control over the power seats, although it operates both seats simultaneous. So I like to say, as the driver goes, so goes the passenger. And you'll see what I mean. They both go up. They both go down. <laughs> the driver can So control. all that really matters is my comfort. The passenger <laughs> just gets what they get. <laughs> oh, that's classic. But a great piece. And what a great big logo right there. And look at the custom work here. Each seat individually like its own piece. Look at how nice that is too. Wow, just, you've got your own controls here. More of that here. Nice two-way 
two uh, piece steering wheel and you can see a little bit through there the great how did you get these steering wheels Mike so clean because uh, usually they're cracked and they look terrible and Dennis Brooks um, is the one who does known for doing a lot of Mopar wheels and he does a beautiful job on them so um, he's from California I believe they call this this instrumentation your push button transmission there I believe they call this the Astrodome. That's your 300 there. And we're going to show you that, what it looks like when it's lit up. So I shared with you, I wanted to show what the illumination looks like on this dashboard, which may be one of the greatest dashboards as far as illumination. Check that out. How that looks. And it's not only that, but you can see it has the park lights here. And if we come over here, the radio lights and you have the tack as well and even in the key and in the clock just so well done the way that looks right there as we talked earlier Lou you'll notice that on the push buttons for the transmission there is no park selection so when you park the car you put it in neutral and then you set the parking brake or emergency brake some people call it wow now this one happens to be operated with the foot on some of the earlier cars it was a hand brake that operated the, the uh, parking brake and all the neat pieces here here's your your fan See that by Chrysler. I'm gonna get the right angle there. You see your tack. This ashtray. You know, your lighter. There. Now it fits like a glove. And even up here, notice uh, there's some words right yeah, there. The mirrormatic is an option in those where automatic dimming mirror. That's a really cool option. That is super cool. Let's uh, open the hood, shall we, Randy? Let's fire it up. Maybe, Mike, you can open the hood for me. Randy, you can start it. There we go. Let me just meditate on that for a second. Holy cow. The cross ram, 413 cubic inch. So unique how that works, right? So do you have these remade, these valve cover stickers? Yeah, actually uh, Gary Gores is the one that did all the reproductions of them. And now Query Quality Automotive has bought him out. Okay. So um, a lot of the little trinket parts and stuff can be uh, gotten through query. So is that right? Yep. And all of the right rubber stuff, um, right up here, like the hood pad, and like I say, they, they make a lot for the Chryslers, not so much for uh, you know Plymouth Imperials and, and Dodges, but the Chryslers are. Is there? Am I missing it? Is there a? Uh... Fender tag or something usually up in the here. Fender tag on this one happens to be in the door jam on the 60 Chrysler. So right here. Oh, there so, we go. Yep. I went right past it. <laughs> it's an odd spot. Yeah. It, put them in lots of weird places. You, you have to kind of chase it down a little bit. Yes. Yep. Some are up I'm, on the. I'm just. Oh. I'm just curious. Is this mirror remote or remote? Yeah. Yes. Okay, remote mirror there. I was yeah. going to say that's a little distance from your arm there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, let's uh let's give it a fire, shall we? for a minute. Look at that. 
a great light. Okay. We got our bumperettes there. Yeah, dual exhaust here. It's a nice day. Perfect. Well, Randy and I are on this 1960 Chrysler 300F Cherry Bomb. <laughs> That's right. And it's a convertible, as you can see. What a great day to be in this car. How's it feel? Man, it feels perfect today. The weather is perfect. The skies are deep blue and sunny, and you, it just can't be beat. <laughs> it just can't be beat. So what's it like uh, driving this thing? Well, it's quite an experience. Uh, the car is, uh, it's not only a very attractive car, I think, but it's also just a thrill to drive in. It has give, lots of power. Give it, a little, give it a little power acceleration. You can hear that 413. Isn't that great? That is great. It's a great sound. It is a great sound. You know, it handles well. It, it's uh, got a long wheelbase, so it's a smooth rider. And, uh, I mean, it kind of feels like you're in a sports car, doesn't it? Yeah. What is the reaction when you are driving at a car show? What, what are people doing? Well, yeah, a lot of people are wondering what it is um, <laughs> because they haven't seen one before. They only made 248 of them. Oh, wow. And I believe there's around 60 that are known to exist. So they're not exactly a common car by any means. Yeah. And one of the things, too, with people... Right, and as you can see that little, you know, that grill there in the hood. Just a wonderful drive, nice curvy roads. I'll take you through this S, S curve here. Now we're driving on bias ply tires, but the car still handles, I like to say, like a Corvette. I mean, it goes around corners and it, it drives just, just like you'd expect it to. And with the convertible top down, it's got a nice, you can hear that little rumble. I hope people can hear that. I think they can. And it's just a great feeling. Well, Randy, it's always so much fun to hang out. And we've got, like you said, the perfect day. With really the perfect car. Lots of attention we're getting. It's so much fun. Thanks so much for being on my car story. Thank you, Lou. Always a pleasure.